I've created a simple guide that you can immediately apply to your gameplay to rank up right after you watch this. And some of it isn't gonna be your typical advice. Instead, this is the stuff 90% of players below GC don't pay attention to in their gameplay that holds them back. But if you can watch this and actually implement what I'm going to talk about, I guarantee it will shoot you up one, if not multiple ranks. My name's Luke, and if you're new here, I'm known as a top 0.01% ranked coach and for running Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we take gold through champ ranked players like you up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less. When this drops, we'll have just crossed 1,900 players in the program and we'll be past 80 of 125 seats sold out for upcoming January 2.0 launch. So if you're hunting for that GC or SSL title and you want in before we sell out, DM me on Discord with the keyword send and I'll send you the details on how it works. My Discord will be the first link down below. Otherwise, let's get into the concepts. Okay, this video will cover six main concepts that most low rank players get wrong. Concept number one, radius of coverage. All radius of coverage means is the space around your car that you could feel the ball or that you could reach at any given time. The mistake a lot of new players make when they get into Rocket League is thinking radius of coverage is sort of like a circle around your car. But this is of course wrong. It's much, much easier to reach a ball that's far out in front of us than one even just a little bit to the side or behind. Yet in practice, one of the biggest mistakes I see low ranked players make is simply pushing up too far. One very common example is something called back post. For those of you who don't know, back post just refers to the side of your net that is opposite the side of the ball. The reason this is so important is because when you rotate back post and you actually stick there, you keep the the entire net in front of you and you make it so that any shot is in front of your car. Yet because most low rank players want to be near the ball, they make the common pitfall of simply pushing up into the middle of their net or worse, pushing up to the front post because they think it's better to be closer to the ball. Instead, if you simply stick to your back post, never creep up into the middle of your net until you see a shot coming, you'd be amazed at how much easier it is to play defense. Let's take a look at another example of pushing up too far and not understanding radius of coverage. A common scenario that you may find yourself in is being the person at midfield waiting for your teammate to center the ball from the corner. It's natural to see a center coming and want to creep up right under the net to be there when it comes. When the center comes, you have no room to actually drive forward and go for a shot. So you get a weak shot or even worse, the ball just completely flies over your head. There's actually a rule for this called the 70-30 rule, which basically just says, okay, let's only move 70% of the way there. That way, when the ball does come, we can drive through our radius of coverage and get a running start for a shot. You do this right and you'll be able to prevent and convert twice as many goals in your game. Games. Number two, corners. Most low rank players completely misunderstand how corners work. You might think that the map looks something like this in terms of danger. Everything on my side of the field is red. And as we move downfield slowly and slowly, the field gradually becomes more green, right? Well, not really. The truth is the Rocket League map looks more like a grid. The red hotspots that you should keep the ball away from are yes, right in front of your net. Most of the midfield is orange, but your corners are actually green. This is because when the ball is in your corner, there are not many angles for it to be actually shot on your net. What a lot of low rank players would do is see the ball coming towards their side of the field and think, this is a problem. I need to push up into my corner. I need to shut them down. I need to challenge and stop the ball at all costs. What's better and what you'll see me do a lot in my road to SSL is when I see somebody hit the ball into my corner, I simply let the ball go there. I know that there are not many threatening options that can come from the corner, so I just rotate wide around, I get to my back post, I keep the play in front of me, and I let the opponent try to take it at me from the corner knowing there's not many angles they could actually convert. When you're on offense, it's the exact same thing. Instead of hitting the ball into your opponent's corner, try to take it to the midfield. This will allow you more angles to shoot and just give you more opportunities to score in general. Number three, 
roles. Roles are something that in theory people understand, but in practice, very few people below GC actually get right. As many of you know, roles in Rocket League are dynamic. It's not good to just have a dedicated goalkeeper or dedicated player playing offense because of boost. If you understand this, you may have heard of the concept of first man, second man, third man as well. First man is the person closest to the ball, whoever is going to make the play. Second man is usually the second in line, playing aggressive and right on call if the first man misses, and third man is the last in line, usually covering the more defensive option and playing safer. Here's where most low rank players go wrong. If you're getting frustrated, you may think to yourself, wow, my teammates suck. They're clearly incapable of scoring the ball. If we're gonna win, I need to make it happen myself. So you turn on the jets, you're grabbing boost, and basically not letting off the ball. Even though it might feel good, this is the absolute worst thing you can do in solo queue ranked. Because while you're upfield chasing the ball, going again and again and again, you get to a point where your team just starts having to sit behind you on full boost doing nothing. And eventually, your teammates won't know what to do. They'll challenge, creep up too far, double commit, and this usually ends with your attack fizzling and you guys getting scored on. Instead, when you're playing 3v3 especially, you need to understand it's better to make your play short, sweet, and obvious for your team. Hit the ball, make your play, then make it obvious to your team that you're leaving so they can go and have impact as well while you grab boost, disrupt the opposing team, or whatever it may be. Trust me, it may feel like you're having less of an impact, but if you do this right, all of a sudden your team will just start scoring more and you'll win more games without having to put in any extra effort. Number four, straight line versus circular rotation. So you understand you need to make your play and then get out, but how exactly? Many low rank players make the mistake of basically only doing straight line rotations. What do I mean by this? Let's say you're attacking in the opposing corner. You're trying to move the ball through their corner, but unfortunately you get jammed, you take a 50-50, and for whatever reasons, the ball's dead and you need to rotate out. The wrong thing to do would be to move exactly back from where you entered. Why is this wrong? Well, because the problem is when you rotate straight line like this, you point heads with your team. Remember, our goal is to cover as much of the field as possible as a team. So when we do these straight line rotations and we go up and down the field, we risk bumping our teammates, overlapping our coverage, and making double commits. Instead, you generally want to move in a circular rotation to flow with your team. So after you make your touch and you realize you need to move through, it's almost always better to continue continue pushing straight across the field and then move in behind your teammates after. This will make it so much easier to rotate properly because you won't be jamming your teammates, they'll know it's their turn to go, and you'll no longer find yourself under the ball all the time. Number five boost management. When you're a new player, it's hard enough to just figure out what to do when you get the ball. Managing your boost is probably the last thing you're thinking about. But I have a somewhat simple solution that will hopefully help you fix your boost management. The problem most low rank players have is they think of boost like an on and off switch. You're playing the game, rotating, going for the ball. Then the second you get low on boost, you completely shut off your play. You go back to your corner, refill, and try to recover back into it five seconds later. High ranked players, on the other hand, think of boost as more of a bonus. If we watch my gameplay here, what you'll notice is I don't immediately decide to go for corner boost, hardly ever. I first look at the play and say, does the play need me right now? If I have a play to make on the ball, I would rather stay up and just collect a few pads and be there to make the play than go back entirely and miss out. Simply keeping your eyes on the play while you collect boost as much as possible will massively improve your impact each and every game. And you'll play two times or three times as fast as everybody in the lobby just because you'll have eyes on the play when other people don't. Number six, the final missing piece to most low rank gameplay is demos. And the reason they're so important is because they allow you to have an impact on the play even when you're not necessarily the one on the ball. Yet I see two main ways people at the lower ranks go wrong with demos. Number one, 
you have the demo chaser. This is the person who's only hunting around the field for demos. This is bad because number one, it's inefficient to use all your boost to maybe get a single demo. And number two, it'll mess up your positioning and just the flow of your teammates play because they'll have no clue when to go or not go for the ball. The more common mistake though that I see is being person number two, which is the pacifist who's only hitting the ball or collecting boost, never looking for opportunities to demo. This is the easiest way to miss out on impact that you could have in your games, especially in twos and threes. So how do we find a balance, especially when we already have to worry about, you know, positioning and all the rest of it? What I want you to focus on that will have more impact than anything else is just something called the rotational demo. We'll go back to the previous example of you're in the opponent's corner, you finished making your play and you're rotating through their net across the field. If there's somebody in your path immediately, the second after you make your touch, you go for the demo. Otherwise, get back, play safe, and you will literally be able to terrorize the opposing team without having to do anything fancier with your max. Okay, I know that was a lot of information, but before you march into your games, there's one last topic I need to address, which is how to actually implement this information. A common issue I have with my students is when they first go to implement any new strategies like this in their games, it doesn't quite work right away. The reason being is because when you first try to change your gameplay, you're going to be actively thinking about the strategies we just talked about. This is naturally going to make your quick reaction actions in game a little bit slower and you're not going to pick up on the stuff that you normally would have because all your brain power is going towards rotating properly or looking for the demo rather than just going for the ball like you used to. As you do the strategies more and more, the good habits that I'm describing here are gonna start to happen without you thinking about it. So I guess the point is, even if you see a little bit of a dip initially, know that that's just how improvement works. If you want more from me, hit me up on Discord with the keyword send for details on coaching, or you can join my free improvement Discord. It's the largest training Discord. It's completely free to join and you can leave whenever you want. I'll have that first link down below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Later guys.